I wanted to go on, this is a long video, but I think it's important. I want to talk about how Romans 7 set me free. It's very strange, but um, Romans 7 basically uh, had me in slavery for a long time because I believed that, um, that I had to fight against my sinful nature. I was told, oh, you know, you need to beat your body into submission. The only problem is, is that sin is not always uh, a, a body problem, you know, like becoming hungry for like cake or overeating. Uh, it could be a nervous problem. It could be an anger problem. It could be a self-control problem. But ma ma mainly what it is, is it's, it's a psychological thing that happens in the brain. And when you try to fix it, you can't fix it. You're like Humpty Dumpty. You can't fix yourself. You can't do it. Nobody can. They, can. they can doctor up the outside of themselves, but when a person's involved in a habitual sin and they're trapped in this cycle of not being able to help themselves, um, and they need help. They need outside help to help them. And um, the problem with Romans 7, looking at it as you're having this habitual sin that you need to fight with your sinful nature is that when you do the fighting, God's not doing the fighting. It's not that you don't fight against what wants to overcome you, but you're not set free from what's warring on your mind, and that's fear. Because this is what Lordship Salvation does to the brain. This, it causes you to, to, to fall into sin more, because what happens when you're afraid of something? When you're afraid of something, you can't get your mind off of it, because you're afraid of it. You're afraid you might think about it. So if you're afraid you might think about something, if you're afraid you might, oh, that something might overcome you, no matter how much you avo avoid it, it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. You've got to face it. You've got to face that cake. You know? You've got to face those things that, that cause you to, to do things that, that give you, you know, when you're trying to do what you want to do, but you're not doing what you want to do. But what happened was, when I found a different message, other than the Lordship Salvation Perfect Yourself method, when I found out that God loves me in spite of myself, that He knows that I, that I have a sinful nature, but His love came in me and took that law off of my back, all of a sudden the fear of the sin went away. The fear of the Lord was not what made me stop sinning. It was faith in Jesus Christ that made me stop sinning. When I was bound by the law, the law became utterly sinful. This is what Romans 6, 7, and 8 are all about. So it's not just that, I mean, not that we don't, still don't sin, but you see the setting free that happened by the law being taken away and being loved unconditionally, whether or not I sin or I don't sin. When I knew that God loved me still, it gave me power and strength. It was like the Holy Spirit saying, being with me, encouraging me that God still loves me and is with, with me. See, sin that, that, that's under the law is God's against me. It makes you hide from God, right? It makes you run. It makes this makes you even more afraid of sinning, right? But it doesn't cause you to stop sinning. No matter how much you beat your body, no matter how much you try, you're going to keep in that cycle sold as a slave to sin. And when Paul was saying, I am, the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, sold under a, as a slave to sin, well, that, that condition reminds me of the condition that I was in before I had grace and everybody else who was in was in before they had grace. Sold under sin and under the law. So when the law was taken, well, this is why Romans is all this, this before and after. Paul is not a slave to sin anymore. And he is not unspiritual anymore. The law is spiritual, but the spirit of Christ lives in him. That's why Romans 7.14 is, uh, is, not, is not the present tense Paul. Because the present tense Paul has the Holy Spirit and is not a slave to sin. So when looking at Romans 7.14,
you must conclude that Paul is talking about the before picture and not the after. We have the victory. Who will deliver me from, oh wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thank, thank the Lord for Jesus Christ, for there is now therefore no condemnation. So he, he is, he's saying that there is a war that goes on in his body. But because he has the spirit of, of grace and the love of God within him, it's no longer conditional love and he no longer has to walk under fear. And that fear doesn't take control and make sin, um, make him a slave or a master or, or be mastered by, by, by sin anymore. So if you're walking in Romans 7 and thinking you're just like Paul, falling and falling and oh, you know, then you might want to take a look at the idea that, that, that that's not, that's the state of what Paul is talking about being unspiritual and not having grace. See, when God is with you, the change is, it, it, it's a knowing that God loves you and reveling in that love. And when you revel in that love, what happens is, is that you stop sinning. You, you're not afraid anymore. It takes the power of sin away. And this is how Romans 7 sets you free. I hope it helps.